Hello and welcome everyone to the 5th episode of our weekly podcast India Colonize hosted by Umar Ha. And now today's episode we are talking about the first conquest of Goa. This conquest was headed by Alfonso de Albuquerque who was succeeding Francisco de Almeida as the governor of Portuguese state of India. By taking Goa Albuquerque became the second European to conquer land in India since Alexander the Great. When Albuquerque conquered Goa, he intended to make it the capital of what was to become the Portuguese Empire in Asia. And it was only in 1530 that the incoming governor Nuno de Quana transferred the vice regal court from Cochin to Goa, making Goa the official capital of Portuguese state of India. On November 4th, 1509, Afonso de Albuquerque succeeded Tom Francisco de Almeida as the governor of Portuguese state of India after the arrival in India of the Marshal of Portugal Fernando Coutinho, sent by King Manuel to enforce the orderly succession of Albuquerque to office. And like Almeida, Albuquerque realized that the Portuguese could take more active role in breaking the supremacy of the Muslims in Indian Ocean trade by taking control of three strategic checkpoints: Aden, Hormuz, and Malacca. Albuquerque also understood the necessity of establishing a base of operation in lands directly controlled by the Portuguese crown and not just in territory granted by allied rulers such as Cochin and Kannur he eyed goa by taking goa albuquerque became the second european to conquer land in india since alexander the great although albuquerque had intended goa to be the center of the portuguese empire in asia it was only in 1530 that the governor nuno da cunha transferred the vice regal court from Cochin to Goa thus officially making Goa the capital of the Portuguese state of India until 1961 Portuguese conquest of Goa occurred under the command of viceroy Alfonso Albuquerque who was successful in capturing the city in the year 15n Goa was not among the cities that Albuquerque had received orders to be captured. He had only been ordered by the Portuguese king to capture Hormuz, Aden and Malacca. One of the sources narrates that Albuquerque conquered Goa on the advice of Timaya. When Albuquerque had declared his intention to proceed to the Red Sea region in order to seek the fleet of Sultan of Egypt and destroy it. It was here that Timaya met Albuquerque on his own in Miran one of the parts of North Canara Timaya advised Albuquerque to attack Goa instead of sailing Egypt and to get the Portuguese admiral to attack Goa Timaya pointed out that one of the Egyptian captains was in Goa and that he was still preparing to attack the Portuguese ships and port with the help of Yusuf Adil Shah who was helping the Egyptians in preparing his warships now who was the maya the maya was regarded by the portuguese as a corsair and a man of low status while in reality he was a privateer who served the vijayanagara empire for a commission of war He was employed by the king of Vijayanagar to attack and loot those merchantmen who insisted on sailing to Goa which was then under the rule of the Bahamanis and other port of enemies. Albuquerque was not the first Portuguese to have been acquainted with the Maya. The Francisco de Almeida showed very great relationship with the privateer both of them had entered into a commercial agreement and transactions along valuable information about their common enemy but why did the maya ask the portuguese to attack an indian ruler the maya had good reasons to advise albuquerque to conquer goa the emperor of vijayanagar had an eye for the territory since he had lost it to the bahamanis in 1472 attempts had been made 
by the emperor to recover this piece of strategic land but all in vain as a matter of fact timaya had imperial instructions to weaken goa by depriving it of its commerce it is believed that timaya belonged to goa himself and that many of the hindu local leaders and heads had written to him requesting him to attack and liberate them from the bahmani rule in the region he himself made attempts to capture and loot the port on its own but failed to do so it must have then occurred to him that he could have made use of the portuguese who were by then known for their naval might he believed that once the portuguese were done helping him in the conquest of goa he would take a position of the governor general of goa and that he would be at the most obligated to pay the portuguese an annual tribute by that was not what was running in the mind of albuquerque he had plans of his own because he realized that goa was strategically placed for defense and valuable for his future conquest but did albuquerque take goa on the advice of the mayor the sources point otherwise It seems like the Portuguese were already planning to capture Goa way before the Maya suggested the act. Evidence suggests that the Portuguese king in Albuquerque had conceived this idea in 1510. For about two decades before 1510, the Portuguese had been collecting information about Goa, its central and strategic position on western coast of India, its island character, its commercial importance, and so on. A Portuguese national Gao had been sent by the king of Portugal to explore India. This man knew Arabic and travelled from the conventional route by land up to Aden and took a ship from there to Malabar. In 1448 when Vasco da Gama was on Anjadeva Island southwest of Goa, he captured a Jew on the island. The Jew was in service of the Muslim governor of Goa and was reportedly have been sent by the governor to spy on Vasco da Gama and to ascertain the strength of the Portugal fleet. The Jew's mission misfired and he got caught and taken to Portugal. He was there converted to Christianity and named Gaspar of India. It is speculated that much detail of the region must have been gathered from him. There was a sense of revenge that grew amongst the Portuguese since their defeat in the hands of Adil Shah in the islands of Anjadeva which compelled the predecessors of Albuquerque to demolish the fort they had built there in 1509 when Adil Shah the Sultan of Bijapur along with the Sultan of Egypt made an allied attack on the Portuguese fleet again they were successful in defeating this alleged attack following which the portuguese targeted every egyptian fleet that passed by the island the shahs ever since had provided refuge and sheltered the egyptians in goa and helped them rebuild their fleets an order was issued by the portugal king to albuquerque ordering him to move towards goa and capture it the order was handed over to the governor through marshal fernando who had arrived in malabar in october 1509 albuquerque however was not in a position to carry out orders immediately as he had suffered a humiliating defeat at the hands of samaran of calicut in early 1510 he would not dare risk another such defeat by attacking goa soon after he preferred naval battles where he was supreme and it was here that he decided to sail to red sea to seek the egyptian fleet and destroy it it was here that timoji mentioned to him the support shah was offering to the destroyed egyptian fleet in goa and that goa was now especially vulnerable as the locals were unhappy with the rule and taxation policies of the shahis and that many times had requested timoji to liberate them from their rule During the siege of Calicut Marshal Fernando was killed leaving Albuquerque in charge of all Portuguese forces which were close to 23 ships 1200 Portuguese soldiers 400 Portuguese sailors 
220 Malabaris auxiliaries and around 3,000 combat slaves that were bought. On February 16th, the Portuguese Armada sailed into the deep waters of Mandovi River. They were supported by 2,000 men of Timoji. The Portuguese landed troops commanded by Domantino de Norana and assaulted the fort of Panjim, now the capital of Goa, Panaji. Panjim was then defended by a Turkish mercenary, Yusuf Gorgic, and a force of 400 men. Yusuf was wounded and retreated to the city, and the Portuguese captured the fort along with several iron artillery pieces. At Panjim, Albuquerque received envoys from the most important figures of Goa and proposed religious freedom and lower taxes. Doing so, he would accept the Portuguese sovereignty. Thereafter, they declared their full support towards the Portuguese and Albuquerque formally occupied Goa in February 17, 1510 with close to no resistance. Albuquerque reaffirmed the city that it was not to be sacked and that the inhabitants were not to be harmed under the penalty of death. In the city, Portuguese found over about 100 horses belonging to the ruler of Pichapur, 25 elephants and partially finished new ships, confirming Timoji's information about the enemy's preparation. For his assistance, he was nominated as Tanda Mor, the chief tax collector and representative of the Hindus of Goa. The Muslims on their part were allowed to live by their laws under their own Muslim magistrate. Expecting retaliation from the Sultan of Bijapur, Albuquerque began organizing the city's defenses. The city's wall were repaired, the moat was expanded and filled with water, and storehouses for weapons and supplies were built. The ships were to be finished and pressed into Portuguese service, and the five fording points into the islands were defended by Portuguese and Malabari's troops, supported by several artillery pieces. At the same time, Albuquerque sent Frere Louis de Salvador ahead of the embassy to the court of the neighboring Hindu Vijayanagar Empire, hoping to secure an alliance against Bijapur. Unbeknownst to Albuquerque, the Adil Shahs had just agreed on a truce with the Vijayanagar Empire and could divert many more troops into recapturing the city than expected. Their effect, he sent a Turkish general, Ulad Khan, with 40,000 troops, which included many experienced Persian and Turkic mercenaries that defeated Timoji's troops on the mainland. Ismail Adil Shah then sent his royal tent by the Ben Stream fort, waiting for the monsoon to trap the Portuguese before giving Ulad Khan the order to assault the island. Albuquerque was informed of this plan through a Portuguese renegade, João Machado, who was now a prestigious captain in Adil Shah's service, though he remained a Christian. He was sent to convince his fellow countrymen to surrender or to flee. Trusting the strength of his defensive position, Albuquerque rejected Machado's proposition. The renegade also told Albuquerque that the Muslims within the city kept Ismail informed of Portuguese numbers and movement. With the coming of monsoon rains, however, the Portuguese situation became critical. The tropical weather claimed a great amount of Portuguese lives, foodstuff deteriorated, and Portuguese were stretched too thin to hold back the Muslim army. Under these conditions, Pulad Khan launched a major assault on May 11th across the Banstrian ford at low tide amidst a heavy storm, quickly overwhelming the small number of Portuguese troops. As defence crumbled, a Muslim revolt broke out in the outskirts of Goa, and a blatant disregard for the agreement with Albuquerque, which he would remember in the future, the Portuguese hurriedly retreated into these walls, with the aid of their Hindu allies, but abandoned several artillery pieces by the riverside. The following day, Ulad Khan ordered an assault against the city, but was repelled. 
Only now did Albuquerque learn from Fairlouis of the truce between the Bijapur and the Vijayanagar. And he spent the rest of May preparing for a retreat. Albuquerque refused to set fire to the city since this would announce their retreat to the besiegers and instead ordered a great amount of spices and coppers to be scattered on the streets to delay the enemy's advance. Before leaving, however, he had Timoji with 50 of his men execute the Muslim inhabitants within the citadel but also took several women that had belonged to Adil Khan's harem onto his ship to later be offered as maids in waiting to Queen Maria. Before daybreak of May 31st, the remaining 500 Portuguese embarked under enemy fire, covered by a small number of Portuguese soldiers holding back the advance of the enemy troops that breached the city walls. The smile then solemnly retook positions of the city at the sound of trumpets. As a part of suggested reading after every episode, today's episode I'm bringing to you Indy's adventure, the amazing career of Alfonso de Albuquerque, Captain General and Governor of India, 1509 to 1515, written by Eileen Sanicu and published in the year 1936. The text has been linked in the description below where you can find a link to the text in archive.org. Please consider it reading. It is all about you can find on Afonso de Albuquerque and his life in India and his adventures in India. This brings us to the end of our fifth episode of our weekly podcast, India Colonized. If you like this episode and our podcast, please consider commenting and sharing with your friends. And do not forget to subscribe. It really means a lot when you guys appreciate us for his work and it helps his work a lot more harder. As we are new around here, we would also appreciate if you could give us your feedbacks and suggestions about the show and what more can we bring to you on this stage. Thank you very much.